Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking. Today I want to take a quick look at a workflow that exists between Autodesk Revit and Autodesk Design Review. And one of the things you'll notice when you open up Autodesk Design Review to take a look at a DWFX is that it's 2013. So they haven't done a whole lot of development on this uh, for a few years because it's pretty much built to what it's needed to be used for. So you can see I've got my Revit open here. I've got uh, a sheet set defined here under my presentation folder. So I want to create a DWFX that consists of these sheets and maybe a 3D view that um, somebody could use to kind of navigate around the model if they need to. So exporting to a DWFX is pretty similar to exporting to a DWG. If you come up to the big R in the corner here and you click on your export button, you'll notice that you have quite a few different file types that you can create. So the one that we want to focus on here today is this DWFX slash D or DWF slash DWFX. So when I click on this, you'll notice again that this dialog box is very similar to what you would see if you were going to export one of your views or your sheets to a DWG from Revit. So you can see I've got three tabs here across the top. This one is telling me what views or sheets that I could put in here. So you can see I've got export, whether it's in session, view, sheet set, or one that I've already got created. I'm going to leave this as is, and I'm going to check off all the views and the sheets that I want to export. But before I do that, I'll just click over here to DWF properties so you can see some of these other settings that you can change. So you've got element properties that will be included. We definitely want to see that in this DWFX. Um, you can check this box if you want rooms or spaces as separate layers. And then you've got some graphic settings here. So if you wanted to use uh, a standard format or change the image quality for a 3D view. So this could enhance the, the file size quite a bit. So I'm just going to leave this as standard format for the time being. And then if you go in here to print setup, you'll also notice that uh, you've got settings similar to your print driver. So the one thing that you want to make sure is that the zoom is set to 100% because we don't want... Uh, any units to get messed up and we don't want to see things not as they are. So uh, the last thing is we'll get out of here and take a look at project information. So we want this information as well to go into the DWFX so if, if, if there's something that we need to change or add in here this is a place that you could do that as well. So we'll go back to views and sheets and I'm just going to get these views and sheets set that I want here. So the first one that I wanted was this one right here. Okay, so that I'm going to include this as a 3D view that uh, whoever I'm sending this to can navigate through. And then the rest of them, I'm going to get down here to my sheets, and I'm going to use all the ones that have the A point series. Okay, so I'm just going to click on all of these until I get down to the, the C. Let's see, there was the site plan that I wanted to get in there as well. It might be down here. Okay, so that one's already included because it's the active sheet. Okay, so if I say uh, save, set, and close, um, then I won't move forward with this, but I can say this as a set that I could use uh, later on, like you see here for set one. Okay, so with that said, um, we could do that, or I'm just going to say next and get going with this. So when I click on next, it brings me to another dialog box that allows me to choose a destination for it. So I'm just going to bring this over to my desktop and I'll leave all the settings for the file naming as is and I'll hit OK. So it's going to do a, a bit of thinking and again if you choose the entire view list or the entire sheet set like a, a much larger sheet set than this it's obviously going to take a little bit longer to print this out or export this out and um, it's also going to increase the file size significantly. So some other things that you can do to decrease that file size and make this work a little bit quicker on your computer is make sure things like the visual style shaded or realistic is not enabled but stick to hidden lines. Um, you can also disable ambient shadows or cast shadows. Anything that's going to force uh, raster processing into this will increase the file size okay so you can see that's all done now so I'm going to come down here to my programs and see if I can't get design review okay so I type in that and we'll open up design review you can see it says 2013 here so we'll just give this a second to load up 
Okay. So now if I come up to the top, I'm going to click on open and I'm going to locate this DF DWFX that we just created. So that should be on the desktop. Let's go up there. All right. So here you can see the DWFX. So I'll hit open. And there's some great functionality in here. Okay, so right off the bat, you can see we've got a list of the views and the sheets that came in. You can see the 3D model. I can navigate around this the same as I would in Revit. And we can get right in here and see what the time of day that I had set up for the lighting. Um, there's some other tools that you can use to uh, section this off if you needed to. So let's take a look at those here first. So if we said um, section face, then we can use different faces to create a section a plane or we could use different uh, the different defined sections so a section XY if we click on that and zoom out we'll see a little UCS here that we can use to pull and push uh, a section plane so if we wanted to uh, rotate around to another view here now we can kind of get into this model a little bit better Okay, so that's some pretty neat functionality to navigate around. So if we had any 3D views, they would be uh, listed in here as well. And then you can take snapshots in here or from a grid line. So let's just click on from snapshot. And then you can see that we can adjust this border if we wanted to uh, create another view here or, or another snapshot essentially. So we'll click on that and you can see now I've got this additional view here built into the DWFX. Okay, so the other one that I wanted to show you is if we go to uh, one of the sheets that are defined here, let's say the first floor plan. Okay, so that hatch is a little bit dark, um, probably something that we would want to change in our, our view template. But you can see if I zoom in on any of these here, um, I can use these markup and measure tools here. So there's one right here that's that's length. Okay, so you'll notice that we, when we get into the file, it's got an actual snap for uh, different layers uh, of this wall assembly. So if I go right from one side to another, okay, we can get uh, a sense as to how big this is. So I'm just kind of snapping that down. I think if I hit shift, it should give me a straight dimension. Okay, so now I've got 19 feet. Pretty precise down here as far as units go, but I didn't really do anything to set that up. Okay, so this is just me kind of uh, extracting data, finding out what some of these distances are. Say if I didn't have the dimension in place, you can see I've got dimensions for a grid, but at this point I've still got the uh, EQ set on some of these. Okay, so we can go in and find out some more data. Uh, the other thing that we can do is select different elements in here as well. Okay, so if I grabbed a column here, you can see that because we set in Revit uh, the options to have element properties, if we select that element and we go over here to the tab object properties, we can see the constraints, uh, we can see dimensions for it, the volume, a whole bunch of great things. So the material finishes, so this is kind of nice, right? We're able to get a lot of data and it's not a very difficult interface to explore and get used to and a lot of these tools for markups and measurements the stamps and symbols they're they're really easy to use so you can see that uh, up here at the top too there's um, sorry revision clouds that we could put in here if we wanted to say make a change to any of these columns right we'll just put that revision in there and then we could put a note as well. I'm not going to get uh, too fancy here with it, but we could put notes in here for our production staff and we could then save this. So I'm just going to save this here and uh, actually I'm just going to save right over top of it. Okay. So it says, do you want to replace it? Sure. And now from Revit, I'm going to come back over here and in my insert tab, I'm going to go back to the DWF markup and click on this and grab that file that I've just updated. So I'll hit open and it says link markup page to Rev Revit Sheets. So I only made a one markup on this, but if I went through the whole entire sheet set, did a whole bunch of markups, you would see the other views, the other sheets. And so that said, let me just hit save on that.
Okay, so that's finished loading back in. So I believe it was the basement plan. No, it wasn't the basement plan. It was the first floor plan. So you can see here, uh, there's the markup. And note that this is on the sheet, not on the view that I'm looking at. This, this markup has been placed on the sheet. So you can see that it's pinned that markup over top. You can see there's the dimension as well. And these specific dimensions, they have, uh, well, dimensions and markups. You can see that they have their properties from design review as well. So if you were to uh, go in and, and make that change, you could then unpin it, I believe. Let me see here. Or sorry, not unpin it, but you could then change. You could say done and and move on. And when you're all finished with the red line aspects of it, then you could simply go back to manage links and you'll notice here that there's a DWF markup spot which we can now unload it. Okay, so if I'm done all the red line markups and I, I need to move on, I don't want these markups on my sheet. So I'll just select that link and say unload and then we'll hit OK. And now you can see that those markups are now gone. We're ready to move forward with the next issue. Okay, so there's a, a lot of great functionality in this uh, this design review and it's it's a free program that's the other thing I think that is the most vital to this this whole video and the point of this is that um, you don't have to have licensed anything you can go get this program for free and it can greatly help your workflow so uh, typically we don't really promote free products but this whole series is all about uh, collaboration workflows and trying to help people that might be downstream from you in the design process get accurate data and not have to do a whole bunch of redesign or um, you know digging we don't why bring out like a scale rule if you have this exact data available right so a scan PDF is nice but it's also typically raster format. And when you're trying to find dimensions from a plotted second generation PDF, sometimes scale can be an issue. And when you're dealing with uh, takeoffs, you need to have, you know, tolerances are tight. So it's important that that stuff is um, that's set up and that you're using data that is already there from the design phase. Okay, so one thing I do want to mention that I've noticed here is when I did do the export for this, I didn't take the actual sheet size. Uh, so it's actually changed these to default by 8.5 by 11. So that would have been in the print driver looking page here. So again, back to export, DWFX. And then in the properties, when we went to print setup, you can see that I didn't go into uh, size. So I would select the 24 by 36 option here and then have something that makes a little bit more sense. So you can see there, now that I've chosen a sheet size, the zoom for 100% versus fit to page is now available. Okay, so again, some other, other aspects of this is the vector versus raster processing. Shaded visual styles are gonna force the raster processing in there but you can um, force back vector processing and choose different quality levels for that stuff. Okay, so um, yeah, I highly recommend going checking out Design Review. Uh, you can get it from the Autodesk website. And it's, again, free program, great tool. Thanks for watching. Bye now.